Hello, Stephanie Paris at anorascorner.com, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hello, 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 hello. Um, hello, and Eric, I love you, my boy. How are you doing? He says, hi, mama. He says, I love you too. He says, I'm doing great. And he actually just did one of these, like, let's go. <laughs> oh, hi. Well, I think it's going to be a short one, only because I don't really know very much about this, but a lot of people obviously know a lot more about this than I do and have sent in some questions. Okay, cool. And awesome. it's kind of a conspiracy theory kind of thing uh, on chemtrails, but also about, and I learned this from the awesomeness of Gaia, chemtrails and geoengineering, which I know you want to about. Okay, so what are huh. chemtrails? What are, is, are they, is it really a true thing? Tell, tell me what okay, you know so, about chemtrails, so, everything you know. Okay, so I, I don't know a whole lot about chemtrails, to be honest with you. I've heard conspiracies about chemtrails, but I'm going to yeah. call on Eric for that one and see. And Eric yeah. is actually bringing someone in. Oh, it's my buddy. So Eric's bringing in Einstein again. <laughs> Einstein! Hi. Hi, Einstein. He said, he went like this. He said, hello, madam. <laughs> oh, stick out your tongue for us. That famous Einstein face. Yeah, he does, the, he does the, the funny face he's actually showing me. And his eyes opened up, like, really wide, too. It's, really <laughs> it's awesome. So um, he says two things. He says chemtrails and contrails, okay? Okay, yeah. So he's planes, like airplanes? Yes. So he says that um, one affects the other he's talking about the okay he's showing me also like your vehicle like a car like um the muffler when it releases um like the smoke um from the burning fuel he oh, says yeah. that, that's the he's giving me that example like we could use this for as a, as an example yes <laughs> it's okay Eric Eric is like Eric is like you got this don't worry he's like I was like I'm a little nervous I don't know a whole lot about chemtrails but okay here we go <laughs> and he's laughing and so he's like um what he's saying is he's like there is um biological uh, components and aspects of it that can be harmful for the environment in large quantities he's saying um but he's saying like overall um it's about the amount of times that um these chemtrails are released or contrails are released he says with contrails what's contrails what's the difference okay uh he's showing me water like there's m more water released in contrails well that, that's when um, the, just the condensation of jets yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, just condensing uh yeah yeah, yeah just condensation of of, um, of of water vapor. That that's just physics, right? That that's not basically that's yes. Yeah, so that's what he's showing me too. Like he showed me the airplane, and he just showed me like you know when the white smoke, like we're looking up in the air, and there's like those white lines, like that's the white harmless. smoke. Right? Yeah, he says harmless. like yeah. he says that part is harmless, um, but he says like <coughs> the government and there are companies kind of that release other gaseous elements into the air um and eric is saying sometimes we're unsuspecting of how much they do it okay and he says that people get confused because they see the white lines in the air but that's not necessarily the chemtrails the bad chemicals all of the time what he's right. saying like bad in quotation marks okay um, because he's saying that there are like companies that he's saying that and the government that like they process chemicals a certain way and it's a lot of times by showing me like flames like the burning of them okay oh my yes. foot is getting really hot he's being funny like when my foot's under heat <laughs> uh. <laughs> he says that they're they're burning off and that they're going into the air and they're kind of like um evaporating as well okay, okay. um mm. he says that aspect of it is fine but he said but mom the cool thing that he wants to lead into 
is um, geo, he's saying it's like a geo. Um, engineering? Engineering, yeah, he's, see, he's going like this. He's like, yes, he's like, that is the key part about it. He says, this is what's dangerous. Well, and what, what, why are they doing, what are they spraying, first of all? There might be many things. What are they spraying? Okay, I'm seeing a lot of elements. He's showing me like the the uh, chemistry chart. Okay. And he's saying like there's several different things that are released into the air. Um, to a degree, they can be harmful for us. Heavy metals? Uh, not, not, yeah, quite, not quite heavy metals. Um, I'm getting more of other elements as well. Okay, I like more of other elements he's showing me like, um, he's saying, I'm um, hearing it's more gas, it's more gas based, oh. more gas based, like that kind of thing. Like what, um, I'm, what I'm seeing is like tanks releasing and like things sh oh. like the air shooting out of them. Okay. And he's saying that in, he's showing me the levels of the atmospheres, uh, the, of the atmosphere, like the different levels. And he says like, once it reaches a certain level, it's not as harmful to humans. Okay. And, and so like, he says this is released and it, it does change the environment because of the evaporation and, and the more of the condensation that's released. When that falls, he's showing me it falls on plants. And, okay. and the environment, and um, he's showing me like, oh, he's saying also, wow, that's a lot, uh, wildlife and like jungles, natural habitats, the desert, all of these different places all around the world are affected by it because um, they are receiving things in the air all the way down to the environment that they wouldn't necessarily naturally have. Okay, so in, in essence, like human beings, as always, <laughs> we, we are affecting the environment through yeah. this, okay, through this interaction, because he's saying it's not, it's not cohesive. Okay. Like, it's not, it's not a natural part of the circle of life, the circle of the environment, of nature, of how things are supposed to be. He says that is the dangerous aspect of it. Okay, well, let me let me just go through some of the gaseous elements on the periodic table that I pulled up. All right, and you say yes or no, Einstein or Eric. Hydrogen, probably not. Nitrogen, oxygen, they're already in the yes, air anyway. Yes, and he said yes, some for hydrogen, yes, and, and yes. Okay, that, that are in these, what they're spraying out. Uh, fluorine. He says, he says yes, fluorine as well, yes. Chlorine. Okay. Did you say chlorine? Yeah, chlorine. He says yes. Any of the noble gases, helium, neon. Okay, yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Neon. I'm not getting neon. Argon. He says yes. Um, um, my, he's, and, he's, and, when, and when you said argon, he's, he said micro, like it's, it's a tiny. very tiny, okay. minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, krypton. Um, no. Xenon. Yes. Radon. Small, small, small trace, trace amounts. Any other, any alkali metal, metals? He says, yes, there are. Yes. Okay, well, let's see of those. Um, let's see, uh, any lithium? No, not lithium, no. Sodium, potassium? Yes, it's a sodium. Yes, to potassium. He's mm -hmm. going, check, check. <laughs> God, rubidium? No. Cesium? No. no. Any of the other, in, anything else in the, of the alkali metals? Francium? He's, he's, he says no, and and the other stuff is trace amounts. Like he's oh, going okay. like micro, like little okay. small small right, things. What, what about the alkaline earth metals, like beryllium? 
He says, yes, that one, yes. Magnesium? No, not as much, no. Ooh, what about barium? Yes, a very strong, he's saying, yeah. Oh, wow. And he's, like, he just actually threw a spotlight on. Oh, uh, yeah, well, that's a heavy metal, right? Okay, strontium? No, I'm not, not getting that one now. Radium? Small amounts, yes. Cal calcium? Small amounts. Okay, any of the halogens? I'm not uh, getting that, uh, no. Okay, what about, what's blocks, blocks, what's that? Oh, never mind, I don't know what that is. Uh, what about the lanthanides slash actinides? Oh, what the, oh, never mind, there's nothing. Uh, uh, metalloids, what are metalloids? That's like boron? He says yes. Every, and, and for these things, I'm finding like, he's, he, okay, so Eric's being funny. He says trace amounts like, let's say for example, you say, mom, it would be like what, like an amount of like what copper is in a vitamin is what he's, oh, okay. like he's saying very small amounts of this. Thanks. But he says, but, but Einstein is saying, but remember, he's saying over a period of time. Oh, yeah. Builds up over Ooh, and over what, again. What about arsenic? Ugh. No, he's he's saying no. Good. Uh, germanium? No. Silicon? Valley? <laughs> no, he says no. An uh, antimony? A little bit. I don't know what that, that particular one is, but he said I little. don't know either. Uh, um, tellurium? No. Uh, polonium? No. Um, any of the any of the others of this group that I'm looking at, Eric? Eric says no, mom, you nailed it. <laughs> All right, let me see. Metals. Uh, did we do that already? <laughs> um, nah. All right, real quick. Noble gases. Do we already do that? And this is this is interesting. So 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 um, <laughs> Mr. Einstein. <laughs> yes. He says, Matt. He says, madam. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, he says. He says again, um, the more dangerous, so he's, okay, so he, he's giving me the feeling and what he's saying is he's showing me out of all of the elements. He said, um, I'm asking him about the percentage. Yeah, what's the biggest percentage? That's about 40% of the elements on the periodic table. Uh-huh. Okay, he says that is what is being um, dispersed. Is which? In the in the chemtrails or the contrails, excuse me. Okay. Okay. That that's still quite a lot. Is what? Which one of the elements is? Oh, oh just what? The, oh, oh, what we've talked about. All right, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So he's saying, like, in particular, like, just like out of the table, like, there's forty percent at least. Of oh, I gotcha. I have are... three more to ask about: zinc, cadmium, and mercury. Mercury, but not zinc or cadmium. I'm not getting that. I'm getting oh, okay. the mercury. Mm -hmm. Anything else I missed at all? He says this is fine. This is this is fine. Laugh. But it seemed like barium was a real hot spot, huh? Yeah. He well, <laughs> Eric's twitching. He's like, yes. He said that's. He said very. Uh, <laughs> Eric just said barium. That's an issue. Um, I'm. I don't know a whole lot. I can't remember that far back to um chemistry class um but he, he's giving me the feeling and he's saying like that is what can cause you to have skin issues and issues with your eyes oh well mm -hmm. um irritants yeah um he's talking about uh contaminants in the water yeah um contaminants in the wildlife because this is falling on them. This is not something they would naturally have oh, um, yeah. in, in, their, in their food source or in that kind of chain or in the water. Mm. Um, it, it, it's like an allergent. Uh, yeah. He's showing me like, picture you go to a nice <laughs> clean stream and you drop a whole bottle of laundry detergent in it. Oh God. All of yeah. the things that mm. you would affect in Wait, that. Oh, yeah. uh, 
right yeah. in that in that ecosphere that environment it's terrible all right is it is it linked somehow to the increase in autism or other health issues he's saying yes um there are several links he said specifically um he put in bold like what he did was he put the word cancer in a huge neon sign wow. like cancer um and different forms of cancer he also said alzheimer's yeah that's what, um, I what about asthma i mean this is he definitely yeah. he said definitely asthma he's showing me like the whole the lungs in general and like bronchial issues because he's mm. he's really like pointing that out you guys are doing good today <laughs> wow he's so really pointing out he's also saying um because of the chemicals and all those things in the air for certain people if they have heart conditions they would be affected by it too like oh, if, wow. if they're born with a heart condition or something like that over a period of time it would be highly affected by that as well oh, God. Um, okay so he's talking about birth defects hmm. as well um particularly he's talking about um clef okay mm -hmm. and lip yeah um he's also talking about hair loss um and i'm also receiving like esophageal and intestinal like issues as well like uh, like cancers or or inflammation yes, like yes implants for bowel disease what yes <laughs> ibs yes inflammatory but um ibs um he pointed that out he's saying colon Wait. colon um issues colon cancer colon um issues he's talking about liver also wow there's so many things that you can be affected by that's amazing um wait when you say ibs are you talking about irritable bowel syndrome and inflammatory bowel uh, disease like crohn's and ulcerative colitis yes he's saying yes um <coughs> he said ulcerative colitis and he's like he's touching on that he's like that's a whole other um issue too um because he's he's saying that as we have that too like the um, there's interactions regarding drug also it's like I, he's oh. telling that like yeah. if you are exposed to um like a lot of these chemicals and you're taking um like drugs for treatment of the ulcerative ulcerative oh, yeah. okay yeah um it would have like worse reactions and like effects on your body too he said i just heard him say like those people will typically die faster <gasps> so it, it it negates the effect of the drugs on uh for treating these he uh, says yeah. yes. yes it does it would be like not taking drug at all oh okay i'm going to get into solutions for it later but any other health issues before we go to the next question neuro like he's saying like neuro like cognitive issues it would cause as well um he's showing me like the brain and also like dark spots in the brain or discoloration in the brain so that's also indicative to me that and he's showing me fire like if certain parts of your brain or your brain cells burning um oh i'm getting like a weird uh i just actually smelled that that's trippy oh wow <laughs> he's yeah. like yeah. um that would not that wow that's amazing and he's also saying that um in addition to that uh spinal um inflammation he's showing me like uh, the spinal cord how those things, those chemicals um, stay like within the body. If they don't flush out, they like may live in the spinal area. Oh, wow. Um, what about multiple sclerosis? Can it, is there a link there? He says yes. Um, and he's also saying like several um, autoimmune um, diseases and disorders I bet. Um, and are attributed to some of this as well um, but then he's saying not a, he's saying not everyone will receive or endure these kind of illnesses um, he's talking about how it interacts with contracts too 
and how oh, yeah. there's a trigger for these things as well. You yeah, say, if you have a genetic predisposition, also yes. I could, yeah. Yes, exactly. And when I was asking about like where else in the body and he was showing me like the spine and the spinal area, um, he was also giving me, um, he was talking about chicken pox and shingles. Oh, really? And how um, he said it would almost be as if like, if you had something in your body already that you were that you received and it's it lays dormant and then it's triggered and something else happens like uh -huh. because it's asleep yes yeah okay not particularly chicken pox and shingles but he just gave me that yeah, kind of like that analogy mm -hmm. yeah wow uh can it, is there an association with restless leg syndrome he said not quite that's more um but if you had neurological issues, it would be. Okay. Okay, but he's, he's saying it's not always okay. directly linked. He's saying it's not always direct. What about mental illness? Like schizophrenia, I mean, any bipolar disease? Is there any connection with any mental illness? He said mental illness, some of it can be linked to poisoning through some of these chemicals, but um, not necessarily just in chemtrails, he's saying there's other um, ways to trigger this in the body, um, just in our everyday lives, not even up in the skies, he's saying. It's yeah. not just like what's falling from the skies. He's saying that um, these things can also be caused by, he's showing me like, you know, under your kitchen sink, like the products underneath the sink, oh, like yeah. your common everyday products oh, that wow. they're not Mm -hmm. <clears throat> like what uh, certain deter um certain compositions chemical compositions and their, their makeup that can trigger specific um things or symptoms yes symptoms and things um especially bronchial and skin irritants and stuff he said oh, there yeah. is there is somewhat of a link there <laughs> now are they trying to cal uh, calcify our pineal glands like with fluoride for example he says with fluoride, I'm asking him, okay, he says with the chemtrails, he says not intentionally. Okay. Not well, intentionally. What, what other chemicals are huge in chemtrails that I've not brought up yet? He's saying you touched upon some of the major ones. Okay. Um, so no others that, I, that are huge? I'm not getting it, no. Okay. Now, how long has this been going on? And then we're going to get to why, but how long has it been going on? He says, well, there's different aspects of that. Um, have, so we've been testing on that for quite a many years, he says. Um, more notable, 1960s stick out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, he says that private companies have um, begun doing this as well to reduce costs um, of elimination of like excess waste or ac excess um, chemicals that can't be utilized or once they're once these components are like mixed with other components, and I'm sorry, I'm not a scientist, so he's showing me all these different beakers and all this stuff. Because yeah, Albert Einstein, Einstein? <laughs> okay, because okay. he's like going back and forth with Eric, and it's really <laughs> funny because they're showing me like the Muppets, you know, like when they have beaker. From oh, yeah, <laughs> that's funny. So it's it's really funny. Um, he says that um, so these these chemical components. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Eric is wearing like this hat now and he's pretending to be the chef, you know, do -de do -de do I'm sorry. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, but he says these chemical components like um, in, in excess, anything can be detrimental, he's saying. Um, it's not for us to go, he's saying, it's not to cause serious chaos. Like, 
really, yeah. really chaotic about it. But he said it is something to keep an eye on. And he's, he's saying that it, that's why it's so important that we um, learn how to take better care of the environment and learn how to plant, how to harvest, how to grow. Um, he's talking about sustainability without um, pesticides and doing yeah. things more naturally so that they don't have to use other things such as like, <clears throat> uh, me like yeah. crop, crop spraying. Yeah. And he says, because when it's all said and done, it all goes into the air. And when it falls from the air, it's got to fall somewhere. It, does, it needs a place to go. So it's going back into our environment. If it's not burning off and becoming. Yeah, but but it, some people think that uh, there's a nefarious reason. Why are they spraying it? I have here nefarious reasons, global warming, even though it traps heat at night and nighttime highs have skyrocketed. It, so, are they trying to do something about global warming? Uh, you know, help help uh, eliminate global warming with the chemtrails? He says, no, they're not trying to eliminate global warming with the chemtrails. Okay. Um, but they, that he said, but they are doing something similar with the bio, like, bioengineering oh sorry what bioengineering yeah but yeah with the bioengineering he's saying though that this is increasing the amount of global warming for sure he says just without a doubt yes it is um yeah, because the nighttime highs i mean it traps the heat at night and so nighttime highs have gone way up absolutely he's saying that we're going to see so now he's showing me like the melting of the glaciers and wow. you know the the uh, water tables rising he says it's all a cycle it all comes together he said initially this was not done for nefarious reason okay he's saying it's human ignorance yeah he's like um he says there's a level of irresponsibility yeah. that has occurred over an extended period of time yeah. he says now it's more prevalent because it's in the forefront we're seeing it more often we're paying attention we're realizing that this is happening so he says that's why it's such a big a bigger like a even bigger deal now because we we are so many decades into doing this already yeah. we've caused so much damage yeah. already well is it is it is the military using the military industrial complex using this for a tactical advantage to like control the weather for war or for any other or, or people doing it for they are so i'm getting they are conducting some sort of scientific experimentations it has not been fully implemented yet so they want to control the weather for tactical advantage you know war wise they're saying yes he, they are um they're they're also using it it's kind of like creating what they're showing me is creating like rain clouds and oh, creating um essentially it's like moving the clouds creating like these these very strange structures of clouds that i'm not quite familiar with um okay. but they look they don't look like they look more like cumulonimbus. Okay. Clouds. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> they look more like cumulonimbus clouds. Sorry. I have to look that up again. <laughs> um, and he's saying that um, this is used, it's actually like as a cover. Yeah. Um, and he's showing me like different regions, um, specifically testing things like this out in the desert. Wow. So what kind of tactical advantage? I mean, I guess you could create a fog to cover uh, for cover, or you could create a drought to like totally destroy a population. That'd be awful. Or create a huge so, armor. So the word that I'm hearing, what they keep saying is camouflage. Okay. There, and there's other details, but they're telling me. Okay. Because I. Well, so, what about, 
weather control for profit, like to make your crops grow and stuff. Are they trying to do that too? That not necessarily, no, I'm not getting that. No. Well, that'd be a nice thing to do. Are they trying to use it to control people at all? Mind no. control, all right. I'm not getting the mind control or the controlling people. They're just, irres they're, they've just been very irresponsible about it and that's why people are so yeah. sick. That's well, why maybe they just didn't know, you know, enough. Right. Once they it, knew, maybe they should have done something, yeah. It's okay. like, so I'm sorry, because Albert is saying that they were, they are just lacked the technology yeah. for certain uh, research purposes at the time and yeah. now they have more of it available to them so they can experiment even more so with that and he's talking about like cause and effect because now there's more of a focus on on uh, pres preservation yeah um, there's more focus on ecology there's more focus on you know um, biology and marine biology he's pointing at animals and animal life as well like the specific um migrate migratory migration patterns oh, yeah. um, of animals um he's showing me and he's saying specifically whales oh whales are like huge he's giving me that like he's showing me different types of whales and he's saying like the way that they migrate and the way that they eat what they're eating too. Oh, okay. Okay, so the original purpose then was to disperse of chemical wastes. Yes. Why yes. didn't they just put them in tanks and bury them like a million miles on the, well, not a million, but one of the- He says that, okay, and Eric, sorry, him and Eric kind of keep going back. So Albert and Eric are both talking at the same time. And they're kind of mm -hmm. like, and I'm like, okay, who wants to go first? Who's holding the mic? So Eric's like, yeah. okay, so Eric, he's, he's talking to Eric. So Eric says that this is, um, this is a lesson to humanity. He's talking about what happens when humans mess with chemicals they shouldn't be messing with, is what he's saying. He's like, think about um, what would happen when something nuclear is buried oh, and yeah. and mm -hmm. how radiation and stuff could affect people yeah. within um barrels in the water or things oh, yeah. buried under the soil under the ground he's like it's essentially the same thing just at a different uh degree like how much and how often they're doing it and the build up to it yeah. so it's like over a period of time, more and more, our environment keeps changing. And it also, he's talking about adaptation, okay? There's adaptation to these chemicals and adaptation yeah. at the animals and the ecosystems and the life, um, the habitats keep changing and have to adapt to. Um, and he's also saying that this is part of the issue as well, because since these energies these 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 beings the um the ecology like everything in in like these different um environments keeps adapting he's talking about their um like genetic makeup also yeah. um is also shifting and changing as well okay well it seems to, like it'd be a lot safer to just drill a giant shaft with a big old cave like a mile below the surface of the earth and, and put it there then it would be to spray it some you know in the air right why could that, that so eric that said say? eric said if, if we did that humans are are irresponsible he says some idiot would try to overthrow the government or take power by threatening to you know like maybe blow something up or set something on fire yeah. and release and poison like a mess well i think there'd be a bigger <laughs> That'd be less of a chance than what's going on now. So yeah. And, anyway, um. So and he's also talking about the countries that do this. Oh yeah, um, I was gonna ask that. Okay. Who's, who's, who's the bomb? So he says that. Um, so the United States and parts of Europe. Mm -hmm. um, he says the Canadians don't really want to do this. Good. Like they're they're somewhat opposed to this. Yeah. Um, He's saying this there's South American countries that do not do this at all. 
Um, they Russia, China? It says Russia um, has done it. Mm -hmm. But do they still? He says, he says yes, to a certain extent they do. Um, he says that um, it's, and then he's also skipping and he's showing China. He And he just went like this, China. <laughs> <laughs> he said that's a whole other story oh boy um, and he says because china has so many of their own manufacturing plants and chemicals and things that they disperse in the air on their own on a regular basis okay that chemtrails yeah. would just add to it he, he yeah. and eric's being funny and he says it's like a big a big pot of stew mixed with a lot of shit. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. Okay, so uh, is this any of this reverse ET technology? I don't know why I have that on the list. This doesn't seem like it. Seems like ETs would be a lot smarter than that. Hmm. He says, no, this is something that ETs would actually try to <laughs> yeah. pop. He says, uh, okay, so um, what country is the most ahead of the game concerning weather control? I mean, positive weather control, not bad. He's showing me the countries that are nearest to like the Netherlands. Okay. Okay, he says they're a lot smarter when it comes to um, not just weather control, but he's talking about energy in okay. overall. Um, he's saying that they have actually research more in terms of um he's showing me like wind power um solar power and he's making an emphasis on like um hydro okay hy um, hydraulic power like okay. uh, well i'm um, talking about using geoengineering to mm -hmm. control the weather this this kind of stuff who's who's farthest ahead in, as far as what we're talking about to control United the United States. He's saying okay. the United States. Now, what kind of planes are they? Are they using commercial airlines for this? Not just military, but actual commercial? Because yes, it's, it's a mixture. Okay. There's a mixture. Um, there is um, private airlines owned by, sub, like, I'm getting like third party, like subsidiaries of okay. companies and things like that. I'm, and he's showing me the names are like blurred uh, out. Blurred out. <laughs> well, they get paid like Southwest like Airlines and Delta. Right. And all that. They right. He's showing me they're like the names are like redacted. <laughs> oh my god! But but they knowingly do this. Yes. Yeah, yes. and it's like they contract out to help. While while uh, they do it when there's no when there are no passengers in there, or they do it while. No, not when there's passengers. Oh, wow. Okay. So now that they know some of the harm that's done, are they trying to con correct um, what, you know, this mess? Now that there's a concern for ecology and all that and the whales and. So Eric says it's give and take. Like there's some people who've really taken up to, he's, he's talking about owning up to it. He's like, yeah. ah, some, some folks are owning up to it while others are kind of like, yeah, yeah, whatever, you know, that kind of thing. But the trend is to, to correct it, I hope. He says, yes, that's the path that we're on. He's like, there's more, there's more um, people vocalizing and, and, and verbalizing about it, like talking about it and talking about global awareness yeah um he's also saying that um that through the that through this like the word spreads and more people become more aware he said even through the conspiracy theories people are more aware of what's yeah, going of course. on good good all right so we're going to talk about how do we protect ourselves now and also how do we detox our how can we detox from you know are there special vitamins and herbs that block the, they help get rid of the heavy metals, block them. I mean, what do we do? So first thing he says is there's a few things you can do, but nothing does it 100%. Um, he's deaf. He's talking about charcoal and like taking 
like charcoal soaks, like baths with like charcoal and charcoal salts. He's also showing me like charcoal, like on your feet, like oh. pulling out toxins, you know, those like sticky pads on your feet that there's like these, I don't know. Charcoal these, soap? Yeah, like these beauty things that are sticky pads on your feet that draw out toxins. Oh. Um, he's saying natural things like onions. Okay, he's showing me onions. He's like natural things like onions, um, garlic um, in our in our bodies and our systems. He's saying garlic is very helpful. Um, Um, and now he's also talking about like certain things in vitamins. Um, so he's saying that um, we could use niacin. Okay. Niacin. Um, yeah, I bet. Uh, Make you flush. But there are some that don't. So slow release, uh, for example. He's talking about a certain like micro levels of phosphorus. Oh, okay. Kind of phosphorus. Mm -hmm. um that that helps out um he says those are the major ones but nice. I Himalayan land salt baths pink salt uh, that pink salt he says salt always helps mom um oh, and, and dr teals they have he has some detox maybe it has ginger and stuff in it i don't know he he's kind of giving me like that he's being funny that's something that i would call like oh the girly stuff he's like yeah that's the girly stuff it's ah. it smell nice um but he's he's saying he's like ginger is good for your for your health to a certain extent he's like but more so uh the salt like he's saying if you could find like the the himalayan salt he says that but he's also saying that there's like black salt also oh, really? like wow. black salt is helpful for that um it, he showed me like lava like a lava salt or like a a black salt he shows me the vol like volcanic almost like the ash oh as well um mm -hmm. he said all of these things are very helpful he says some things you can find more easily than others to okay, assist. So what if you just take a bath and I'll, every time you take a bath or, or maybe in the shower step away and just dredge yourself okay. in a little bit but that yeah. so he's also that. talking about aloe vera and how important the aloe oh, vera okay he says if you wanted to do something like this you could have the aloe vera you could drink the aloe vera oh. like an aloe vera like a juice or eat it yeah um, he's also saying um Something about soy as well. And he's saying oh. soy will help flush it out. Okay. Also. Okay. And he's just showing me like the intestines. He says like, some people can handle it. He's showing me the actual edamame, like the soy bean. He says Ooh, not broken down. Edamame. He's Yummy. About the actual bean. Okay. Like in the pod, edamame is showing me. That's very interesting. Okay. Wait, you eat <laughs> the pod at all? No, he oh, says not the pot, but he's just showing okay. me like it's it's the enema. Mm, yummy. Okay, now uh, just two que questions more. Uh, well, why has it been kept a secret? Uh, the oh, chemtrails. Well. Why has the chemtrails yeah. been kept a secret? Um, they know it's wrong. <laughs> I guess. I guess that's it, huh? Yeah, Eric says of course. Like he's saying, who wants to witness shit falling from the sky? and then stand there, watch it, and breathe it in and have it fall on their body. <laughs> that's awful. Is there any way we can stop this from going on? And that's my final question. That's not right now. This is, this is he said in due course. Yeah. In due time, but not right now. Yeah. It says it has to play out a certain way. Yeah. Is the deep state involved in any of this? And here, I thought that was my last question. But. He says no. He said wow. not this one. <laughs> Finally. All right. Well, thank you, Stephanie Perez. Perez. Thank you. In thank space. you. And yes. um, thank you, Eric. I love y'all both. And you check her out at norascorner.com. We'll try to put it right here. I don't do this anymore because look how big my face is. <laughs> but anyway, talk totally to you guys later. Great. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful one. And Eric says he loves you. Bye-bye. Love you too. <laughs> Bye.